So apparently all of this was faked. Hello and guten tag. I am the Fog of War. This is the start of a short series focusing on conspiracies about the past or denial of history. This video is about Hans Wormhat's understanding, or lack thereof, of the bombing of London and Dresden. Allegedly London was hit with bombs for a long period of time. Allegedly? <laughs> Well, you always know you will be presented with great evidence when you hear that word. When I was in school, this is one that never made sense to me. And when they when they talked about that, I was just, how could that be? How could that be that they were just dropping bombs all over London? It just never felt real to me. Well, historical evidence doesn't care for how you feel. As for the question how this came to be, at first Hitler disallowed the Luftwaffe to attack London for political reasons as he still hoped that the British would sue for peace. However, a navigational error diverted a bombing run intended to destroy a factory in Rochester over London. So in the night of the 24th and 25th of August, the first bombs were dropped on London City by mistake. Churchill ordered a retaliation attack on Berlin, and from here on out, the fight was on. I mean, Hitler was probably Walt Disney. You heard it here first. Hitler was Walt Disney. So, if it was real, it would have been real total devastation all over London. People, anybody that lived in London would have just died or had people in their family die. You know that air raid shelters existed. And bombs were not just magic kill all people devices. The, the air raids have always felt not real to me. I am sorry that reality hurt your fee wings. The theater of war, they were putting on a show. There's a reason that they stopped the daylight ones and switched over to nighttime. There's this whole thing. I'm, I'm not going to read most of these slides. If... Oh, you don't read. Well, I'm not surprised. That being said, it would do you good reading up on history. They switched over to nighttime raids because it was just a hoax. They stopped flying airplanes over. They probably just started playing airplane noises over loudspeakers or just flying a few overhead. No, the Germans switched to nighttime raiding because it's an awful lot harder seeing an aircraft and shooting it down when, you know, it's dark. More than 40,000 civilians were killed. It should have just been everybody. Once, once it was full-out war, we're dropping bombs on civilians in London. But what's stopping them from hitting Big Ben? What's stopping them from just leveling the city completely? The British didn't just hand over their airspace to Germany. And they had AA batteries, even though they weren't at full operational capacity. And the Air Force was able to muster more planes as the Germans had stopped bombing their airfields. As for why Big Ben wasn't hit... Do you know how hard it is to aim a bomb dropped from about 4,000 to 6,500 meters if the British are shooting at you? Compared to the city of London, Big Ben, or the Buckingham Palace for that matter, isn't that big at all. Most German pilots wouldn't even know where these monuments would be in the city and wouldn't be able to make them out in the dead of night. And they had orders to attack the city, therefore they would drop their bombs and get the hell out before they were shot down by the Air Force. How were the bombings so superficial? Getting, getting your country constantly bombed by things, it should be crippling and horribly demoralizing, and the wars should end quickly. It's not the kind of thing that drags on and on and on. You cannot drag on a bombing of London. It's something that you just do it, and there's severe, re reper severe repercussions. Like, did they not respond by just bombing the crap out of Berlin? It's theater. None of it happens how it should happen in real life. If you had actually read how all of this bombing of London business got started, then you would know, yes, they actually bombed Berlin. And later in the war, they would go on to bomb most major German cities to ruins. Usually, the, I just picked this because this part right here, usually the prescribed targets are not hit. They're just totally incompetent. I mean, that's the only way that you could have months and months of air raids on a city like London and still have so much of it standing, not completely wipe out the population, and not just escalate. By the time your enemy is bombing your capital city, that's there's no going back from that. That's 10 out of 10. You're striking back 100%. Well, as I said, at that point in time, the British were not near 100% striking capability, so they were holding on for dear life. Later in the war, with the German war effort shifting towards the Soviet Union, the British got much needed space to breathe. Now that the pressure was off, they could regain strength and Britain would go on to become the staging ground for the Western Allies operations in Europe. 
The problem with this video is that there is sometimes just 10 seconds of silence where he tries to find something in his slides. And at other times he just repeats things he has already said or makes such nonsensical claims that I honestly don't know how to answer. I just thought this was funny, this idea of a delay action bomb. It's designed to explode sometime after impact, to spread terror. Oh, here we go. However, the use of delayed action bombs, while initially very effective, gradually had less impact, partly because they failed to detonate. They just love putting stuff in here like this, little clues. The bombs didn't work. Yes, some bombs were faulty. And that is the exact reason why we still dig up explosives left over from the Second World War to this day. Look at this. Barrage balloons. It's Disneyland for the masses. Like, in what world does that make sense? As a reason, how, those should be the easiest things to shoot out of the sky. And it's used as defense against aircraft. They have all sorts of strings. And I guess people are supposed to fly into the strings. And I don't know about that. That doesn't seem right. Does that seem like an effective, an effective war tool? I don't know. It just seems like Disneyland. Just because it doesn't seem right to you doesn't make it fake. Barrage balloons were effective to a certain degree. They were more of an area denial weapon to hinder accurate target acquisition by forcing planes to fly higher or approach from a different angle, thereby flushing them into the path of AA emplacements. And no Hans, you wouldn't waste ammunition by shooting the balloons which you one needed to get close to, which is a dangerous endeavor, and two don't serve any real tactical or strategic purpose. I liked this quote. In 1956, this person wrote, they thought of air warfare in 1938 rather as people think of nuclear war today. And we know that nuclear war is fake. Same thing with aerial warfare. Not that bombs, it, they probably overplay all their missile technology and their bomb ability, but they probably can drop bombs from airplanes. It became such a just no, no big deal thing that the air, quote unquote, air raids were like weather stating that this day was very blitzy. Okay, that just means they were flying more planes overhead than normal to put up the illusion, and they were demolishing more buildings. Look, people walk past it like it's nothing. Does that look like a war zone? Yes, it looks like a war zone. And it's not uncommon for people to make jokes about really unfortunate situations. I just thought this was kind of, this was getting into the very specifics of how they, how did they bomb London during the night? It wouldn't matter. They were bombing over such a long period of time. They obviously had access to all sorts of firepower. It doesn't make sense to bomb London a little bit every day for a long period of time. They just would have gone in and leveled the whole city. Nazi Germany had a limited number of pilots and a limited number of planes with limited amounts of carrying capacity. Once you've dropped all your bombs, you need to get back to an airbase to rearm, refuel and repair damaged aircraft. In addition to that, with any aircraft that is shut down, you lose valuable trained airmen. You cannot just click a button to respawn new pilots. They need to be trained, which takes an awful lot of time, and they need to be familiar with the newest aircraft, bombs, and so on and so forth. In addition to all that, Operation Barbarossa was knocking, and the Germans had other, more Soviet problems to deal with. Fires and lighting were simulated, and then they give you some... So this is where they're giving you the truth in plain sight, that they make up some fires and uh, trying to look like destruction happening. But then they give you a fake reasoning. And what it is here is they say that it was to disguise during, because all these night raids, right? So they lit fires. Okay, so I'll just try to summarize. This is what they, they claim that their reasoning was for making fake fires. They claim that during the night raid, they would bomb an area and that would make fires. So what they claim that they would do is they would try to put those fires out as quickly as possible and then go light other fake fires somewhere else so that the bombers missed. If you were able to read, you would understand that they created lighting in areas that were not vital to the city to give the impression of there being a factory of some sorts. So the Germans would come in and bomb a patch of empty land that looks like a factory. The next few minutes are again just, I don't believe this and I don't understand how one bomb cannot destroy a whole building. So I'll skip to the next interesting part. I just picked this because the raid against... Uh... Coventry was particularly devastating and led to widespread use of the phrase to conventrate, just the words that start with con. They like to make expressions that start with con, because it's a con, it's fake. This is a trait of thought that only works in the English language. Don't you think that other languages exist? There's some stuff from Dresden. Bodies, I don't know, so I guess you might think that this stuff is, uh, I don't know, not great to look at. But to me it just looks like dummies. 
I don't see any. How do you see anything here? How's this proof of anything? Bodies of civilian casualties? I'd have to take your word for it. And they have this, uh, forget what you call this, the little baby carriage, just to get your emotions. Over 90% of the city center was destroyed. It doesn't really look like it from the photo. Oh, look how he skips away fast from the photo of a destroyed city. While the outer walls of the building still stand, all the floors and everything in them is completely burned to crap. A pile of bodies. How do you, it really doesn't look like bodies, it just looks like a ton of clothes. It's like the hollow hoax, the shoes. I can't take that as proof of anything. It really just looks like a pile of clothes. And they have the exact number. 6,865 were cremated. Okay, remember that. that they, they have the exact number of bodies that's on here. Who counted it? I always want to know who counted it. Maybe the poor people who had to cremate their fellow city members, possibly loved ones, where the bodies didn't just float on a pile and then spontaneously combust it. And maybe it is interesting for someone who had lost loved ones to know that they were cremated that day. And I will not go into the territories of Holocaust denialism. A lot of buildings they claim got destroyed, like this opera house, I think is what it is. But it was really hard for me to find pictures showing how destroyed it got in the, in the war, so how much they had to rebuild it. Oh, will you look at that? A picture of the opera being burnt out and destroyed. You just found one. Congratulations. I think I would leave it at that. The amount of incredulity this guy pumps out is just unbelievable.